I'm not interested in the auctions. Oh, it's all money. Oh, I don't want to think about it, blah, blah, blah. I think that's very foolish. Hello, this is Vazo X Vazo, Evil O. Good morning from Udaipur. Um, today I thought I'd do something a little different and I just wanted to go through the Saffron Art apps that I have on my smartphone. And if you're young and you don't have these and you're an aspiring artist or an aspiring collector, I suggest you get them. They're wonderful apps to have on your phone. So I have both the Saffron Art app and also a Story LTD app. The way these work is they're quite wonderful. Um, you can go now, I have open here the Saffron Art app and you see they have all their auctions listed on it. Um, I'm going to go to the last one they had in June, 12th and 13th of June 2019. And we're going to open that up. And then on top you can see they have analysis, they have all lots and my lots. Now my lots is if you have put a uh, bid on something, uh, a pre-bid, I forget what the word for it right now, but if you've, if you've made any kind of bid on a work, that's where you look though. It's the lots that you are bidding on. Um, all lots is of course all lots, <clears throat> but I'm going to look at this analysis. So if you look at this, um, first of all it tells you what the auction is. You can see that they sold 68% of the works. So there were a total number of lots of 120 lots. Of that they sold 81 lots, 81 works. Um, they don't tell you how many were unsold, but you can do the subtraction. So the total incoming value that Saffron took in was 28 crores, 58 lakhs. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, that's about 4,142,000 US dollars. Not as big as maybe a Christie's or a Sotheby's sale, but it's a lot of money. Saffron does pretty well. Um, and so I'm gonna go through these top 10 lots by value as to what were sold. So the very one on top was the Via Skytonde, an untitled from 1958, and the winning bid was 9 crore, 52, 52 lakh. Um, that's 1,380,000 US dollars. It's a beautiful, beautiful work. I can understand why this went for the high price that it did. Um, I don't know what the estimates were right now. If I wanted to know that, I could click that open and check. I'm not going to do that right now though. Um, beneath it, the number two top selling lot was an FN Souza. Now, <laughs> if you know me, you know I make a lot of fun sometimes of a lot of the FN Souzas that are on the market because it just seems like there's too many of them because he really produced a lot in his life. He sort of scribbled every day. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous FN Souza. This is Souza, what, the sort of Souza that made his name and it was titled, it was titled Hampstead, and it was made in 1964. Now this sold for four crore, 55 lakh. That's a lot of money. That's about 660,000 US dollars, according to, to their conversion here on this page. Beautiful. Um, the number three painting here in the auction was an S.H. Raza Abindu from 1992. It sold for 1 crore 36 lakh. Now, to be honest, um, Raza is not one of my favorite artists, and, and, and it's not to say that I don't like him. Um, you know, Giti Sen's book Bindu was one of the first books, Indian art books, that I ever read. Um, it was very inspiring. It, it brought me into the world of not only Raza, but also all of the progressives. Uh, the whole progressive movement. I understand Raza's contribution to Indian art. Um, however, I find the Bindu series has become too um, branded in ways to overuse that word. It seems to be. Now, people will argue that they were meditations and that he was doing them again and again in a meditative way. I can understand that. But on just a personal taste level I much prefer his Rajasthan series say and not because I'm located in Rajasthan just because those Rajasthan paintings seem so much more painterly um, so much more artistic in a way that appeals to me 
Um, beneath that, we have a Baikash Bada Chargi, which sold for one crore and three lakh, about 150,000 US dollars. Now, this is a very interesting Baikash Bada Chargi because it's very atypical to me. It's not what you expect to see when you're thinking of Baikash Bada Chargi. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful painting. It's a beautiful landscape, but it doesn't have that element of grimness that often creeps into his work. Um, it doesn't shout that it's one of his works. So, you know, if you're a collector, many collectors like to buy things, and that's why this whole branded image thing comes about in the art world, because collectors like to buy things they can hang on their wall, and their friends will walk through the door and say, oh, that's an Emma Hussein, oh, that's a Pablo Picasso, oh, that's a Ganesh Haloi, um, something that's noticeable. And I think very few people would walk through this collector's door and say, oh, that's a Baikash Bada Chargi. Um, however, you know, sometimes people buy things for exactly the opposite reason, and sometimes they're interested in buying something that's very unique, very atypical, and something that they want to be able to explain to their friends, you know, and just gives them a lot of uh, personal satisfaction just because they have something very unique from the artist. So, you know, there are some artists that really look for the FN Souza that does not look like an FN Souza. And I think this might be one of those cases. Now, below that, you have an Akbar Padamsi. It's a Metascape from 1961. I think this is just a classic work. This is beautiful. I understand why it got 99 lakh as a selling value, the winning value. Um, now you have to understand that these winning values always include the uh, buyer's premium. So it actually the buyer, what, what it sold for was a little less than this, but then there's a buyer's premium tacked on on top of what the bidding price was at the time of the hammer going down. It's a little hard to explain, but the prices reflect a little raise. And they reflect what the buyer is actually paying, you know, including the the um, the uh, the premium that is going to the auction house. Now below that is the FN Souza, circa 1970s. It's a okay. If I'm sorry, MF Hussein. It's an okay F MF Hussein. Um, it's not that thrilling to me. It's I wouldn't say it was one of my favorite Husseins. Um, here you have another artist who really produced a lot of work and some of it was astoundingly beautiful and good and some of it was not. But this I would say was good but not that exciting. But it went for 96 lakh. Um, then you have another Vias Gaitonde, went for 74 lakh. Once again, not one of my favorites of his, um, but nice. It, it has a Paul Clay quality to it. It's quite nice. Um, We've got another S.H. Raza Bindu from 2000. Um, this is my problem with these Bindus. They just become very repetitive. And after a while, they're just not that interesting to me. Um, and I do understand the whole meditative argument, but they're not. And then beneath that, you have a M.F. Hussein, untitled. They don't have a date listed really on here. The winning value was 50 lakh. Now, this is not one of my favorite MF Husseins. Um, not because of the little, I want to say the BJP lotus flower in the middle, which seems rather ironic now considering what happened to Hussein and his having to flee the country. But um, uh, the subject matter just seems a little bit too, um, too trite to me. It, it, it doesn't speak to me very much. And beneath that you have a nice little Christian Kana. Um, not one of my favorite Christian Kanas, but I do like Christian Kana, and that sold for 37 lakh. So that's the top 10. But then I like to go into the um, all lots and just scroll through. And then you have a lot to go through because how many were lots were in this auction? 120. I'm not going to go through all of them. You have a very atypical Jamini Roy from his Impressionist period. Um, the winning value was 11 lakh. Quite astounding to me. Then you have a more typical Jamini Roy. The winning value was 12 lakh. Another uh, Jamini Roy at 13 lakh. Um, a Gagendranath Tagore drawings went for quite a bit of money. 
Um, not exactly sure why. And then you have some Ram Gopal Vijay Varghias, and, and those I get excited about personally because this was our Vijay's uh, grand uncle. So um, there's a connection between our Vijay and Ram Gopal Vijay Varghia. Our Vijay, his last name is actually um, Vijay Varghia. So, you know, I like to see that these have been in auction, but you see the reserve was not met on any of these three. So none, none of the three sold for what was asked, which is too bad. They were estimate, uh, estimated between, it looks like, three and a half lakh and four and lakh, 83,000. 83, um, no, they didn't do so well, too bad. Uh, the K. Ramanujan, uh, Ramanujan, H. A. God, just scroll through here a little bit. Um, George Kite, Sri Lankan artist. This is interesting. I like George Kite, and I'm always interested that George Kite is included with these uh, Indian auctions of Indian art um, because he was actually Sri Lankan, of course, and this one for 13 lakh. Um, it's a very nice piece. That M. F. Hussein, again, those two. And I'm very sad to see that these Ram Kumars did not sell, that they did not meet their reserve. That's really too bad because I like I like Ram Kumar a lot. I like all of his work from the early days to the landscapes. So that's a bit disappointing for me. Uh, the Selos Mukherjee, who was um, one of Richard Bartholomew's favorites, I think, of the uh, painters of the day, and today he's rather forgotten about, but here you have a nice painting, went for 11 lakh, and KHR, same 15 lakh. Um, here's a Ram Kumar that did sell, sold for 7 lakh, 78,000. So, you know, with that, and then you'd have to figure in the size of these works, um, perhaps the condition of the work, and maybe that would make some difference as to why these sold or didn't sell. Um, here's another very, very dark uh, Ram Kumar from 1950s Autumn Landscape, and it sold for 25 lakh, 86,000. Now that's a good price for Ram Kumar, and um, I think probably because of the date, because it's a very early one, probably because it has a title. Um, there's a lot of things going for that. Here's another very nice FN Sousa actually went for 3,41,000. That isn't bad, and I think this is a good FN Sousa. I mean, this untitled girl from 1958. You can always sort of tell with artists when they were doing things seriously and really expressing themselves, and when they just hit a formula and they just crank it, start cranking out the formula. And, you know, with some Sousas, you can see he's doing something seriously, and with other Sousas, you see that he's just cranking out the formula. And I guess that's what I would try to say about the S.H. Razas that I was talking about earlier. It's the same thing. Sometimes they're really doing things seriously, and sometimes they're cranking out the formula. Here's another F.N. Sousa that is interesting also, quite nice. Um, just going through, uh, Shanti Dawa, well that's nice to see. Um, Shanti Dawa was maybe more of a society artist, but I did like his work quite a bit. I had one of his prints in my collection. It's now in Iowa. Uh, a Jagdish Swaminathan sold for 7 lakh, that's good. A G.R. Santosh selling for 14 lakh. Um, very, very good. I'm, I'm happy to see these things. There's some drawings by M. F. Hussein that look interesting. Um, I just want to go down and see if there's anything else I want to comment on. This is getting oh these two Lalu Prasad Shahs. Um, I can see why one sold and one did not. So one that the reserve was not met, I see is very rather boring. It's sort of what Lalu Prasad Shah typically does. I do like him as an artist, but the one below seems very unique and special. It still, still is obviously a Lalu Prasad Shah, so I can understand why this one sold and sold for six lakh. Um, Manji Bawa, uh, Taib Mehta, Ganesh Pin. Um, a very beautiful KG Subramaniam that did not sell. 
Um, the reserve was not met and it was only estimated high value at 2,76,000. So that's rather sad to see. And I don't understand why this Shanko, Shanko Chowdhury sold for 7 lakh, um, but beneath it, Himat Shah sold for 27 lakh. That's very strange. I like Himat Shah, but I would think the Sanko Chowdhury would have gone for just as much. And then you have a KG Subramanian um, sculpture selling for 27 lakh. Okay, I can understand that. I like Subramanian a lot. Um, there was one thing in here. This Bupin Cocker, I feel, was really sad. This is a beautiful, beautiful Bupin Cocker. And it's quite gorgeous. And I believe if I can check here, I believe it was signed. Gifted by the artist to a friend, acquired from the above private collection, ink on paper drawing. Oh, it mentions no signature. So that is probably why it did not sell at a high price. The reserve was not met. It didn't even get up to three lakh. I was wondering why that didn't sell. The reason it didn't sell is it didn't have a signature. So that explains a lot. This very nice suite by Zarina Hashmi also did not make um, the reserve. That's very sad. I like Zarina Hashmi a lot. Um, I think I probably gave you enough of a feeling the way I, I go through these. This one, um, this piece of work was, of course, in the Empire Strikes Back, which was a uh, very, very well-received and quite famous show by now. And the fact that it went up for sale from the Saatchi collection, um, I'm quite surprised, but um, it went for 19 lakh, which isn't bad for a, uh, a sculpture that is so, so well-known. It's called Arabian Delight by Uma Mulji. Um, so that's interesting. A couple Jagannath Pandas selling for about four lakh. A very atypical Sabod Gupta selling for 10 lakh. Um, let me just look at this here. It's rather a strange one. It's not opening up on my phone. I can show it. I can, in editing, I will show it. Um, Gigi Scaria, very, very nice painting with sort of an Icarus reference. Anyway, I've gone through too much of this, but if you have never done this as a young collector or as a artist, I think you should get these apps on your phone. And I think you should do this. Take a look at the auctions after they happen. The big auctions with the well-known artists, also the no reserve auctions at Saffron Art. They have no reserve auctions in which you can bid as little as I don't know, 6,000 rupees, and you might walk away with something really special. Um, it's worth watching the auctions and the prices because it helps you know what's selling, what isn't selling. It maybe will guide you with your own prices a little bit. Uh, it might guide you a little bit with how you approach the art scene and how you think about your own art by simply being aware to just discount it and say, I'm not interested in the auctions. Oh, it's all money. Oh, I don't want to think about it, blah, blah, blah. I think that's very foolish with the way the collectors are spending their money. Even if you disagree with that, even if you think it's foolish and they should be buying your friend's work and your work instead because it's much more important and probably is many times. It's, it's really beautiful work that many of the young people are doing, of course. Um, and it's very sad, I feel, that many collectors are only fixated on these big name artists that come up again and again and again in auctions. But despite all of that, you should keep your eye on the auctions and get a feel for what's going on. Because someday in the future, you and your friends might be taking up the place of those people with any luck you guys, you young people in your 20s or your early, early 30s will be in the auctions at some point and maybe getting some very good prices at auction. So just to say that and I'll say goodbye now, goodbye from Evil O. I hope this didn't run too long and see you next time. Bye.